Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Discovery Lab Online, where staff from the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History are leading programs live, and then they're archived on YouTube. I can't wait for you to meet my friend, LaShawn Spottenbear, who's leading today's program. Just a quick note, you can leave questions and comments in the live chat, and we'll try to answer those at the end of the program. Hi, my name is LaShawn Spotted Bear, and I work with our science collections here at the museum. And one of the neatest things I'd like to share with you is a wonderful egg collection that we have. And so for our program today, what we're going to do is we'll be looking at different kind of animal eggs. You're going to help actually do my job and identify them. And I'll show you the techniques for that. And then also at the very end, we'll dissect our own egg. So we'll see what parts of the inside of the egg look like and how they're helpful, why they are there. So let's begin with our first egg investigation. I'm going to show you a series of eggs and I'll tell you a little bit of background about them. And then maybe together we can figure out what kind of the eggs they are and what they'll hatch out to be. So the first one I'm going to show you uh, is from a lady who was working in her garden. And as she was tending her, her garden plant, she has tomato plants. And she noticed that there are these little weird things on her leaves. Um, also, she knows that some of the leaves were being eaten, so she knew something was happening, like what kind of animal. So let me show you the eggs that she brought me, and we'll look at uh, what, what else I found out of, about these eggs. So I'm going to put these eggs on the document camera we have here, just so that we get a better look at them. All right. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So these are relatively small. In fact, they're so small, we had to place them on a red dot so I wouldn't lose them. So this is what the lady collected. Um, she had, what, what I noticed is that they're very tiny and I noticed the color and also the shape. So those are the three characteristics that I use when I'm looking at eggs. So the size, well, I'm gonna put my finger up next to it and it looks like I can gather all of these eggs and put them right on top of my fingernail. In fact, it looks like there's about uh, six eggs that will fit perfect. Um, the shape, well, they look round just like the red dot that they're on, so they're round eggs. And then color, well, to me, they kind of look like a, kind of like a tan color. They may look really dark brown to you, but they're like a tan. And what she told me is that she found these eggs on her leaves. Now they were on her tomato leaves, so we can imagine that there's this green background and these eggs were on there. And that's really important because this animal does lay her eggs on plants. And that way, whenever the animal hatches out, the larvae as we call it, from these eggs, they'll have something to eat. And we actually have a larvae for you to see. I call it a larvae, but you may call it something different. When the larvae hatches out from these eggs, they're pretty tiny. They're like the string or a thread off your clothes. And their job is to eat all the plants that they see, or the leaves. That helps them to grow. And as they get bigger, they'll get to be about this size. So pretty large, about as thick as my finger. And you may notice that the larvae looks the same color as the leaves, kind of a sh different shades of green. And that's great because while this caterpillar is eating the leaves, he also stays camouflaged, he stays protected. Now, after he reaches this stage in his life, he's gonna have a sac that forms around him. It'll go around his body, and then now it's time for him to rest. As he rests, this caterpillar will go through a big change. In fact, it's called a pupa. And whenever this animal does hatch out from this sack that goes around his body, he'll turn out to be a beautiful adult. So let's see what this caterpillar will turn out to be. I'm going to move up the specimen onto our document camera. And you can see that it's an insect. And it's actually a moth. You can see how much his body has changed. From the caterpillar and we call that metamorphosis because he's gone through a big change a complete metamorphosis um, he still has probably the same uh, size body so it's about the same size but you may notice that he's developed four wings two in the front and two in the back or hind wings he also has antenna and a very fuzzy body you may also notice that as an adult the adult moth 
he's a different color. He's not green like the caterpillar, but you may see all shades of brown and a little bit of yellow. So this adult is called the tomato hornworm moth. So now we could identify those eggs and tell the lady exactly who was visiting her plants and eating her tomato leaves. All right, so this comes from the insect group, these little tiny eggs. I'd like to show you another group of eggs that's kind of in a different way. And it's not really laid on a leaf, but can be found um, and kept very hidden. I'm going to slide these off. I said it can be found because actually this one came to us from a gentleman who was cleaning out his garage. But he didn't know it was there. He had to look in the corners all tucked up and he was gathering all the webbing around. And that's what gave me a clue because he was trying to figure out what these are. So they were around webbing. In fact, if you look in my jar, you may see a little bit of webbing in between. And so I did a little bit more investigation. And so I took that, he found him in his garage. He knows there's a lot of webbing, but then for the samples, I looked at the size, the shape, and the color. Okay, the size. I'll hold up my finger right beside it. And it looks like each of these round things will fit on top of my finger one at a time. So I can't fit them all together. Also, the shape. Well, they kind of don't look totally round. They look like kind of like a, a globular, like a blob. And then the color, they were kind of the same color as the moth egg. But I know they're not a moth egg because they weren't laid on leaves and they're much larger. So I did some reading and what I found is that this animal actually has eggs in a sack. So what we're looking at are egg sacs. And if we could open them inside, we find these little tiny eggs. And there could be anywhere from 100 to 250 eggs. So now that I know that these are not eggs, but egg sacs, I learned about the number. I learned where he found them. We found out they're actually spider egg sacs. So you may see that some of those little spiders have hatched out. They look like little brown specks in my jar. And we actually have some spiderlings in our collection. You can see them right there. Yeah, they're so tiny. But you know, there's a lot of spiders that we have in our world. And what we found out to, to be is that these egg sacs and those spiderlings in my jar are a part of the black widow. Yeah, it belongs to the black widow. So she doesn't lay her eggs on leaves. She actually tucks them up, kind of hides them out of the way so that they won't be bothered. And that way they'll hatch out um, from those egg sacs. So he was very surprised that he had a black widow um, laying her egg sacs in his garage. So what group do the spiders belong to? We talked about how the moths belong to the insect group. A lot of people think that spiders are bugs, but they're not actually bugs. They're not part of the insect group. They belong to a group called arachnids. Yeah, so now we can see a type of egg sac from an arachnid. All right. Now we're going to move on to a couple more. In fact, I'm going to put, you keep on using the document camera, I'm going to show you this real small one. It's so tiny. In fact, it's even smaller than those moth eggs we first saw. You can see how much smaller. Yeah. In fact, it's almost hard to see, but it's that little speck. Now that little speck is actually missing something. And let me show you. If we were to see this animal's eggs, in the wild, we'd have to look in the pond and we would probably see them floating on the top and it would look something like this. So we see that little spot in the middle, but what's missing is that clear part. And so since they're all grouped together like this, they're actually formed an egg mass. And so this animal lays her eggs on the water. This clear part provides the food for the animal to grow, but also since it's sitting on the water, as the sun shines, it'll also heat up and kind of make that animal warm to help metabolize and grow and develop. What also is pretty neat is that this animal lays them kind of near um, plant material in the pond so that those plants kind of cover them up and keep them safe. Now you only see one in my dish, but sometimes they can lay as many as 6,000 eggs. 
So do you have an idea of who might lay these eggs in a pond? And they're all grouped together. All right, let me show you who it is. We actually have a preserved specimen, and it belongs to frogs. Yeah, so they lay so many eggs. But you know, when they hatch out, they don't look like the frog. In fact, they go through metamorphosis like the moth does. And they look something like this. They look like the tadpole, yeah. So tadpoles actually hatch out from those eggs and that metamorphosis they take, you can see, is so different. So they have a huge head and a long tail and their job as a tadpole is to eat. They eat those plants and pretty soon what happens is that their body goes through that change. In fact, in this photo, you may see like there's a little foot right underneath that tail. And as they begin to grow, what happens is in the tadpole body, that leg gets longer, but that tail gets shorter. In fact, the back legs come in first. This is one of my favorite ones here. In this photo, you can see both the front and the hind legs, but you can still see the tail. And you can see that he still lives in the water. He's taking, he's going up to the top of the surface to take a breath. Until finally, you can see that he has transitioned to on being on land. Looks like he's on maybe a little bit of rock here, but you can still see a little bit of that tail left. Until finally, he becomes the adult frog. Yeah. So now we learn a little bit about the amphibian, what the amphibian eggs look like. All right. So we've learned about the moth, we've learned about the spider, and now we've looked at the frog egg. Now I'd like to take a break and we're going to look at a chicken egg. We're going to switch to another animal. And this one we can actually uh, be hands-on with. We're going to look at the structure of the egg. We're going to look at the parts of the egg and learn why they are important. And also, we're going to identify those parts of the egg. So you can gather up materials if you have them. You've got, you can get an egg, um, some toothpicks, a plate, and some gloves if you'd like. And while you're gathering those materials, I'll get my lab set up on the document camera. So I'll have my plate here. Of my chicken egg. Get my toothpicks here. And then I'm going to put my gloves on. All right. So now we're going to look at those three characteristics of eggs that I study. We're going to look at the size. The size. Well, if we compared it to the ones that we've seen before or already in our program, we can say it's pretty large, but we can say it's a large egg or medium egg. The shape, very different than what we've seen. In fact, it looks oval, so it's smaller at the top, wider in the middle, and then it's smaller at the bottom. Oval shape. And color. This one is a, kind of a solid white. I see a little bit of spot but I don't see any patterns or stripes, but it's mostly white. All right. So now what I'd like to do, I'd like to take one of our fingers, if you have your egg, and I want you to rub the outside of the egg. What do you notice? When I drag my glove finger on it, it kind of doesn't just slip right off. In fact, it drags, it feels like it, there's kind of bumps on there. And what we're doing is we're actually touching the outside of the eggshell. And what I notice is that our finger rubs over pores. So there's holes in this eggshell, somewhere between 10,000 to 17,000 holes. And why are those holes there? Well, it allows for gas exchange. So it allows oxygen from the outside of the egg to go through the eggshell, the animal that grows inside. Also, while the animal's growing inside, um, it produces water vapor through respiration, so breathing, and then also uh, produces uh, carbon dioxide. So those, the water vapor and the carbon dioxide can escape. 
that's not trapped into that eggshell inside. Now what we're working with or what I'm working with is an unfertilized egg. So we won't see a chick developing, but we'll get to see the parts that help a chick to grow. Also, what's really neat about the eggshell is that it feels very fragile. It's kind of a thin eggshell. And then also, it's made up of calcium carbonate. And that's really important. So as the chick grows on the inside, it's going to use the calcium carbonate uh, to strengthen its bones. All right, so now that we've observed our egg, we looked at the size, the shape, and the color, now it's time to crack it open. So what I'd like for you to do is to gently tap and make a little break in the shell and then hold it over your plate and we're going to dump it right inside. We're going to see have all the contents just go right underneath and then we'll identify the parts. So I'm going to gently tap it on my table. I made a crack. So I'm going to put my thumbs right where that crack is and I'm going to gently separate it. Just kind of take it apart. There we go. Now you have your eggshell. You can just set it on the side of your plate. In fact, you can see how thin that eggshell is. And you may also notice when you crack it, it looks like there's something on the inside. So go ahead and pick up that eggshell and let's see what it is. I'm gonna pull part of it and it looks like there's paper. But actually that is membrane. There's two uh, pieces of membrane. There's an inner and outer stuck together. And that um, helps for the egg to not to dry out. And then also it helps to keep bacteria out as well. All right, so we're gonna set the eggshell on our side. Now, let's check out what's in our plate. So there's a couple of parts I want you to identify. And let me show you what it's gonna be. We're gonna look at the yolk, something called the germinal disc, the albumin, and the chalaza. All right, so let's go for the first one, the yolk. That's pretty easy. That's that big, colorful ball that you see in our plate. So yeah, it's yellow. Although it can be kind of an orange color as well. It depends on what the hen has eaten in its diet. And the yolk is really important. In fact, it provides uh, minerals and vitamins and fat for the chick that grows. So where would the chick sit? Well, while we're looking at the yolk, I want you to find the germinal disc. And what that is, it looks like a little white spot. In fact, I drew, drew some on my card here. This is what we're gonna look for, this little white spot that's on the yolk. Can you find it? So I'm gonna take my toothpick and I'm gonna point to it. Mine is right here at the top. So that's the germ cell. And that is the chick. So he sits right on top of the yolk. So he's gonna eat that yolk as he develops. Okay, so we found the yolk, the germinal disc. Now we're going to look at the albumin. Well, there's two parts to it. There's a thick and a thin. So take your toothpick and run it through that clear stuff. See how runny it is? This is the thin albumin. Now, can you find the thick? It's also clear. And it's surrounding the yolk. In fact, when I kind of tug on it, the yolk moves too. So the albumin is important because it, it provides protein. For the chick. Okay, let's look at our list, see what else we need to find. So there's the albumin. Now we're looking at the chalaza. What is the chalaza? What else part, what parts do you see in our egg that we haven't talked about? All right, it's going to be these strings. You can see there's a string, a bundle of string on one side of the egg yolk, and there's a bundle on the other side. So tug on those strings. Yeah. So these strings actually keep the egg yolk in the center of the egg. So if this chicken egg ever rolls or tumbles, then the egg yolk stays in the middle. It won't be bouncing around, which is good because that's where the germ cell or the baby chick would be. But these chalaza can also be eaten. So these are protein strands as well. And the last thing I think is really fascinating is that how the yolk stays together. And there's actually a clear membrane that holds it. It's like a pocket almost, kind of like the membrane we saw on the inside of the eggshell. You can tell that there's a clear membrane if you just gently take your tool or your toothpick and you push it into the yolk. When you do, you'll actually break through that clear membrane and you can see how the, the egg yolk will spill out. All right, so those are the parts of a chicken egg, of an unfertilized egg. But I want to show you a picture 
of what happened uh, in a real fur bite. Keep it on the document camera. So this are the these are the items that we discovered. We found the yolk, of course, and in our picture, the germinal disc is now red, and you can see that there's blood veins connected to the yolk, and it's mentioned as a small embryo. Here's the albumin, all mixed together, the thick and the thin, and then here's the protein cord. You can see how it keeps the yolk right in the center. The only thing that we didn't see was this part back here and it's the airspace. And that's because when we crack through the eggshell, when we opened it, that airspace went from inside the eggshell to the atmosphere around us. So that's the only thing that we didn't see. What's interesting is that it takes 21 days for a chick to grow and develop. And you can see in those 21 days, it begins to consume or eat the yolk and also the albumin. You can see that there's gonna be a waste, a pocket of waste uh, products for it. And then you can see how the embryo is developing. You can see its eyes, its nose, and its wing. Here's another photo or picture of the developing chick. You can see that it takes up half the egg now. And let's look at the egg yolk. It's getting smaller and I can barely see any albumin. And so on the final 21st day, you see the chick and there's no more albumin or yolk. And you can see what the chick uses to break out of the eggshell. It has a bump on its nose to help break through what we call an egg tooth. So I think that's so neat how we can just look at eggs and try to figure out or determine what kind of animal hatches from those eggs and then look at development. So I want to show you another animal that uses an egg tooth, but it's not a chicken. In fact, it's not part of the bird group at all. So let me show you the egg. And I want to see if you can determine what group of animal it comes from and then what animal is, is it. So I've got one more egg I'd like to show you. So a lot of our specimens are preserved. They are real and they were once alive. But we also have items that belong to the, the animal as well, like this egg. So I'm going to take my spoon and gently scoop it out. Place it right in my petri dish. So it looks like it's in water, but this is actually alcohol, and that's what helps to preserve it so we can study it and keep it for a long time. So this egg looks very different from what we've seen. It's not oval, it's not round. In fact, it looks like it's been stretched out, isn't it? It's very oblong. So let's look at those three characteristics. We're going to look at the size, the shape, and the color. Okay, size. I'll hold up my finger again. Pretty large. In fact, it looks like maybe it's about two inches. Yeah, two inches long. Let's see how it is on width. Uh, maybe about an inch long. Okay, shape. You said it was very strange or unusual looking from what we've seen before. So it looks uh, oblong. So long in the middle and round on the ends. And then color. So it may look a little bit dark to you on the, on our camera, but what I notice it's kind of like a kind of like an olive green color. Sometimes they can range from a light yellow to tan. All right, and you may notice when I touch it, it's very, very soft. It's not, it doesn't have that hard shell like the chicken egg. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this egg and let's see if you can guess at what kind of animal or what group of animals would hatch out from this egg. So this egg is laid by an animal that likes to lay them in a clutch. There's not just one egg together. Sometimes there's many as 10 to 30 eggs. Um, this animal lays it in a kind of rotting veget vegetation, so under a log, and to help kind of keep the egg warm, and then leaves this egg alone. This animal I mentioned uses an egg tooth, and what it will do, it's gonna, ha it's gonna use all the food on the inside, just like we saw with the chicken egg. It's gonna have all that available to it to grow and develop, and then whenever it's ready to hatch, it'll use that egg tooth and make a cut in that soft shell, and then it will slither out. So does any animal come to mind? What kind of animal would fit in an unusual egg like that? Well, not only at the museum do we have a preserved collection, but we have living collections too. So I brought an example of who would hatch of an egg similar to this. 
So this is our corn snake. Um, he's an albino one. He's called uh, Albert. And so he would actually hatch out from an egg just like that. Now, he's not, he wasn't this long when he hatched out. In fact, he was about 10 to 12 inches, so about a foot long. But you can see how long he's grown. And in fact, they can be from two to six feet long. So yeah, so he has an, he would use an egg tube to help him make a cut from an egg. So where would that be? Well, actually, it would be on the tip of his head. And it's like a little projection that would stick up. And that would help to make a cut. And then after he uh, slithers out, that egg tooth would fall off because it's not needed anymore. So yeah. So this is one of the eggs, a reptile egg that we see that this corn snake would hatch out from. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about eggs. I enjoyed sharing the collection with you. And I look forward to seeing you at the museum sometime soon. If you have any questions, if, again, if you could just put them on our YouTube page and we'd ha be happy to answer them. So LaShawn, thank you so much for doing our Discovery Lab online. For everyone that's watching live, tomorrow our class schedule is at 11 o'clock we'll be doing urban animals. What are some animals that you can see around your neighborhood even if you live in a city? And then in the afternoon at 2 o'clock we'll be doing a Sun Earth Connection class as well. So each day we'll have live classes during the weekdays and then you can see our archived classes that have even more great things on it on our YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.